Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Brandi Frost and I am a neonatologist at North Shore University Health System in Evanston, Illinois. I am also a clinical assistant professor of pediatrics with the University of Chicago Pittsburgh School of Medicine. Today I will be discussing long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, which I will refer to as long-chain PUFAs or PUFAs and the preterm infant. I would like to disclose that I am a paid consultant for Me Johnson Nutritionals. To begin, I would first like to review what PUFAs are. They are fatty acids that can be classified into two categories, known as omega-3 and omega-6. The omega-3 fatty acids are formed from the precursor alpha-linolenic acid, also known as ALA, which has an 18-carbon backbone and three double bonds. Two examples of this type of PUFA are docosa hexanoic acid, also known as DHA, and icosa pentanoic acid, also known as EPA. For the omega-6 category, these are derived from the precursor linoleic acid, or LA, and include arachidonic acid, or ARA, which has a 20-carbon backbone and four double bonds. Long-chain PUFAs are important in both pregnancy and infancy. Of significance to the preterm infant is that these fatty acids are maximally transferred in the third trimester of pregnancy. Therefore, for infants born in the late second trimester or early third trimester, as are many of our preterm infants, this placental transfer cannot occur. Furthermore, in our smallest and sickest preterm infants, enteral feedings must be advanced slowly and cautiously, meaning it can take days to weeks to achieve full feedings, and at this point, the enteral route is the most reliable way to provide these fatty acids to preterm infants. There are intravenous lipid emulsions available that contain long-chain PUFAs, but it is unclear currently if these products can support the needs of preterm infants. In addition to the above limitations, preterm infants have immature desaturase and elongase enzymes, which are critical to endogenous production of long-chain PUFAs, and they also have decreased fat stores. All of these factors contribute to putting the preterm infant at inherent risk of long-chain PUFA deficiency. Our group and others have previously demonstrated this deficiency in preterm infants. This is a table from our paper published in the Journal of Pediatrics back in 2013. We enrolled 26 extremely low birth weight infants into our study and followed serial blood levels of long-chain PUFAs over the first two months of life. We found that DHA and ARA levels decreased significantly over the first two months of life, as you can see in this table. Even more notable, however, is what happened in those infants who were exposed to intravenous lipids for greater than 28 days and therefore took longer to achieve full enteral feedings. In this group, you can see that the DHA decline is even more pronounced, dropping from a baseline of 5.5 weight percent to 3.0 weight percent at two weeks and further at the 2.7 at eight weeks. The decline in ARA was not more pronounced in those infants with prolonged exposure to intravenous lipids. Now that we have established the risk that preterm infants are at for long-chain PUFA deficiency, I would like to change our focus to discuss why these compounds are important to preterm infants. First, there is evidence that long-chain PUFAs can improve visual function as well as brain development. The first study I will discuss is a supplementation study in which very low birth weight infants who have a birth weight of 1,500 grams or less were enrolled in randomized to supplementation with DHA and ARA and compared to a control group of non-supplemented infants. Of note, all infants in the study were fed either their own mother's milk or donor breast milk. The infants were assessed at six months corrected age with ages and stages questionnaire, as well as event-related potentials, which is an assessment of recognition memory. They found that the intervention group had improved problem solving as well as improved recognition memory on testing. This next study, which took place in Australia, enrolled preterm infants born at less than 33 weeks gestation and randomized them to two different doses of DHA in addition to a standard dose of ARA until they reached their estimated due date. They assessed the infants at two and four months corrected gestational age and found that in the high dose DHA group, visual acuity was significantly better at four months corrected gestational age. With regards to neurodevelopment, results have been more heterogeneous, but the studies to date have been small in size and often use the Bailey scores of infant development, which is a broad assessment tool. Neurodevelopmental effects as a result of long-chain PUFA supplementation may actually be more subtle, such as effects on memory or attention. In one Norwegian study by Westerberg et al., 44 very low birth weight infants were supplemented with DHA and ARA and compared to 48 controls. 
They assessed these infants at 20 months chronologic age, and while they did not find a difference in the Bailey scores of infant development, they did find improved attention in the supplemented group compared to controls. In a separate larger study by Maria Macrides and her group, infants born at less than 33 weeks gestation were randomized to high-dose DHA or standard-dose DHA, which was given from day 2 to 4 of life until term corrected age. They then assessed the infants at 18 months corrected age with a Bailey exam, and 657 infants were assessed at this follow-up time. While there was not a significant difference between groups with regards to the overall Bailey Mental Developmental Index score, the score was higher in the girls who were supplemented with high-dose DHA. Furthermore, severe cognitive delay was also decreased in the high-dose DHA group. Therefore, some subgroups may benefit more than others from PUFA supplementation. In addition to visual and neurologic effects, long-chain PUFAs may impact morbidities in preterm neonates. Gamie Martin and colleagues reported several years ago that low DHA levels in preterm infants are associated with an increased risk of bronchopulmonary dysplasia, or BPD. Furthermore, they also reported an association of low ARA levels with an increased risk of late-onset sepsis. In contrast, however, a recent large study by Collins et al. supplemented preterm infants with DHA and actually reported an increased risk of BPD in the supplemented infants. However, this supplement was provided as DHA alone without ARA, and many have suggested that an appropriate balance of ARA and DHA is likely needed in these infants. In a recent meta-analysis of 18 randomized controlled trials and six observational studies of long-chain PUFA supplementation in preterm infants less than 32 weeks gestation, a trend toward reduction in bronchopulmonary dysplasia and necrotizing enterocolitis was observed in supplemented infants. These type of analyses are limited, however, by the fact that many of the published studies enroll mostly larger preterm infants, and the smaller, younger preterm infants are those who are most at risk for both long-chain PUFA deficiency and preterm morbidities, so further studies are needed. Interestingly, long-chain PUFA supplementation may affect retinopathy of prematurity, or ROP. A study published this year of Sweden randomized 206 preterm infants born at less than 27 weeks gestation to supplementation with ARA and DHA from the first three days of life until 40 weeks postmenstrual age. In the supplemented infants, there was a significant reduction in severe ROP compared with non-supplemented infants. As previously stated, long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids likely contribute to brain and eye development in preterm infants and may impact neonatal morbidities as well. It is also apparent that preterm infants are at risk for deficiency in these important compounds. Therefore, what is the best way to ensure adequate supply of PUFAs for preterm infants? A World Association of Perinatal Medicine consensus report recommends supplementation with both ARA and DHA. Current infant formulas do contain both of these PUFAs at approximate average human breast milk levels. However, these levels are average for term infants, and preterm infants may require supplementation above this. Research su suggests that a ratio of ARA to DHA of 2 to 1 is most beneficial in preterm infants. For those infants unable to tolerate full enteral feedings, newer intravenous emulsions available for use in the NICU do contain long-chain PUFAs, but it is unclear if these formulations can adequately provide for the needs of growing preterm infants. Ideally, infants can advance on enteral feeds to goal as enteral provision appears to be the best method to supply long-chain PUFAs at present. Maternal breast milk does contain PUFAs, although content varies based on maternal diet and somewhat by geography, as breast milk in women who live in areas with high fish intake do have higher levels of long-chain PUFAs. It is becoming increasingly common for pregnant women to take a long-chain PUFA supplement or to take a, pre a prenatal vitamin containing long-chain PUFAs. Furthermore, human milk fortifier used in preterm infants also contains PUFAs. When a preterm baby's mother does not wish to provide her own milk, or if her milk supply is limited, the standard of care in NICUs is to provide donor breast milk. While donor milk does contain long-chain PUFAs, levels are even lower than maternal breast milk, so a preterm baby is likely receiving lower amounts of PUFAs if the majority of feeds are provided as donor milk, and this is likely inadequate for preterm needs. In babies who receive preterm formula, the amount of long-chain PUFAs approximate average term breast milk concentration. Given all of the above, it is likely that the preterm infant requires additional supplementation, particularly during times of feeding advancement or when an infant will have a prolonged time on intravenous nutrition. As we have seen, the smallest infants are likely to be impacted the most, and many take weeks to months to achieve adequate feeding volumes. Even after achieving full enteral feeds, additional supplementation may be needed. Therefore, alternative strategies are needed to support growing preterm infants with long-chain PUFAs. 
We and others have published studies evaluating the use of concentrated supplements in preterm infants. In our recently published study in the Journal of Pediatrics, we demonstrated that the use of a combined BHA and ARA supplement was able to stop the drop in long chain PUFA levels in very low birth weight infants compared to those infants given placebo. While promising, there is still much work to be done to determine optimal dosing strategies and also the impact of PUFA supplementation on important neonatal morbidities. These are my references and I thank you very much for your attention. This video was provided to you by Aspen and supported by an educational grant from Reckitt Mee Johnson. This five-part video series on the nutrition requirements and feeding issues for the preterm infant will be available on the Aspen website at nutritioncare.org forward slash neonatal care resources.